Hi, we're glad to be back together again. And welcome to our next uh, video log with Roger Newbold and Matt Rich. We're certainly glad for our support staff. I'm the furry face guy <laughs> that you're looking at right now. And we're going to be talking today about usable cameras. Now, before we start, I want to make sure it's understood. Whatever you're hearing and seeing today is my opinion. We're not interested in starting World War III again. Don't want that to happen. And also, everybody has an opinion. Everybody. And whether it's informed or not informed, that, that's the question. And so I'm trying to give you the benefit of my 40 plus years of uh, experience in dealing with photography. And I've used almost every kind of camera from Fuji 617 to Hasselblad X-Pan. I've used... Uh, uh, 4x5 Wisner I had uh, and used for a long time at 8x10 Deerdorf. I've used Canon, I've used Nikon, I've used Pentax, I've used all kinds of things. So I'm trying to give you the best that I can. And uh, so as we talk about what is our best, most usable camera, I, I'm just giving it to you from my own opinion. Now, I believe that there are certain cameras that are better for certain jobs. Jay Maisel, the famous New York photographer, said the best camera is the camera that you have with you. Seldom, seldom do I go anywhere without some type of camera usually carry uh, my little small uh, Fuji and this will get me by for most everything but you know there there are cameras that uh, sometimes or places sometimes you just don't have the right camera and lens set and everything with you but certainly one thing is I want to have a camera that delivers quality. And, and it should de deliver quality to you consistently. It should always give you the best. Now, number two, I believe in portability. Portability is so very important. If you can't carry it, you won't carry it. You know, a 4x5 view camera is a beautiful thing. It makes spectacular uh, images, great quality, big film size. It has just about everything you want, except you can't carry it. When I met with Ansel Adams the first time, he said, oh, you're using a 4x5. You should be using an 8x10. So I whipped out and bought me an 8x10 Deerdorf. Of course, I used to be about 7 feet tall, and that Deerdorf just ground me into the ground like an eraser. You can't carry it. It's slow to use. If there's even a hint of wind, because of the expansion of the bellows, they would sit and uh, fluctuate in the wind, and you, you don't get good pictures. So I, I want a small, portable camera that delivers great quality every time. And I prefer, and this is what I'm trying to get to today, one that allows me to set the shutter speed, set my f-stop for depth of field control, and number three, it allows me to change ISO as I need and that I can also do that with the camera and confirm 
that that has been set and those items are taking place as I shoot. Now, really sounds simple, really sounds easy. Uh, but you can see by how many manufacturers are out there and how many camera models are available out there that it is not as easy as one, two, three. It, it takes a little bit about. Now, anything we say today can be translated very easily into film cameras as well. Now, mainly I have abandoned film because of all of the problems with getting film developed, finding the film, uh, scanning the film, and doing all of the other things. Digital is uh, much easier to deal with and work with. And so I have, for the biggest part, done away with that. But you're welcome to do that. Now, cameras are ubiquitous. I mean, almost everybody has a camera today of one sort or another. So let's start off with our beautiful cell phone. You know, it works much better as a phone than it does as a camera. Even though it may have two or three lens settings, they are somewhat limited. The iPhone is limited to, I think it's a 23 millimeter f2.4. Now, on iPhone 11 and above, and you can set uh, you can set your focal length, you can set your f-stop, and you can do all kinds of things that you used to could not do with a phone. It does make it more valuable, but it's still working with a chip, a photographic sensor the size of your little fingernail. And depending on what you want to do with that image, you may or may not be in luck. And so I prefer something that's more fitting to the conditions and for my needs. And so a phone, uh, I'm not saying I haven't. I have got a couple of good images off my phone. And they have made it to Facebook. But they don't make it in big prints. I mean a print that can be enlarged to maybe up to 8 by 10 and you're about out of gas. Now for a lot of people that's fine but if you are one of the kind that like me wants to make some big prints and would have ideas of uh, print cells and everything else it's just not gonna cut it I'm sorry. Now there are other types of cameras. I have used the small um, little teeny cameras that uh, that are bridge cameras or point and shoot type cameras that uh, have all kinds of great nice things but there's nothing up here that tells me what I'm setting the camera at. I have to be looking at it through the LCD on the back to see that. Once I check on that, set my settings, and then begin to take pictures, I can see the picture, but I can't tell what settings are being used at that time. And if I, if I check up and decide I want to change depth of field or shutter speed for something that's happening, I, I just don't know what's going on. So there are a lot of point and shoot, a lot of bridge cameras, those that have uh, fixed lenses on the body. There are a lot of interchangeable lens cameras. Now, like I said, there are a lot of manufacturers and everybody is vying for your dollar. I like, personally, I use Canon and Fuji. And I like the Canon line, and we'll get to why in a minute. But something like the Rebel or the lower entry end level cameras, you have to have the LCD available 
to set your settings. There isn't a set up on top to deal with. And I need to know what shutter speed, f-stop, and ISO I'm using. We'll find out why in the coming upcoming uh, vlogs. But uh, trust me, they're important and you need to know. So in like the Rebel series or some of the other Nikons and other manufacturers, once you make those settings and turn on the thing to view on the LCD, all your settings go away. You can't see it. You don't know. So you are left dangling out there wondering what's going on. Now there are a lot of cameras like Polaroid. For a lot of years we used Polaroid for all kinds of things with their material. They were great but again they they didn't make big prints. You couldn't get them easily into digital format. There are a lot of things of the old Polaroids that went away. Uh, there are tons of other things and uh, I'm only going to tell you about what I think is best. Now I like a camera beginners won't understand why but I'm telling you right now I like a camera that has the ability to set the shutter speed the f-stop, the ISO, and I can set it, I can see it, and then when I'm shooting, it's also available back on the LCD. I can see all of that information. I can also see histograms and other things that we'll eventually talk about. Let me uh, just show you here on my Canon. I can set my shutter speed and f-stop and you can see it right here in the little LCD on top. I can set my focal length. I can set my uh, anything I need to over here on my mode switch. But the best thing is I can see right there I can see my histogram, my shutter speed, my f-stop, my d amount of depth of field. I can see my ISO all of that information is available to me right on the camera. So when I'm shooting, I can be looking at my picture that I'm going to shoot at uh, my big face. And I can also see all of the settings and whether they are sufficient for what I need. I can also see them on top. So if the camera is up on a tripod or down low or something else, I can see all of that information that is needed to make a shot. Now, I personally am telling you that I believe is the best. Now, you can buy anything, you can use anything, but I'm telling you eventually you will be unhappy with it. Now, I had an experience when I was overseas I wanted a camera to document what I was seeing and doing and all of the different people and all of the different culture and everything that I was dealing with. I had a friend that said, look at this camera. This is so cool. There's nothing on the top. There is no nothing there to, it's just really clean. It's got one little knob and it's, it's really great. It doesn't even have to have an interchangeable lens. You can take this, load film in it, and be shooting with it in five minutes. Okay, I better buy one. So I got that. It wasn't four or five months, and all of a sudden I realized this, this is not working for me. It's not telling me the information I need to know. So I upgraded, talked to other people, and they said, well, you ought to buy this. And I, I moved from one camera to the next camera, found out that, yeah, this is okay. And uh, nothing against Pentax, because I think they were great, but the Pentax Spotmatic had a screw-type lens mount, and eventually that didn't work out so well. I changed to Nikon. I used Nikon for some time. Then I changed to Canon. 
and I have been a cannon shooter for uh, a number of years now, number of decades, and it works for me. It gives me the information that I need to know on top, in the back, verified. And so I really believe that you need to take time to go out and check out the camera, do some research. Does it do what I want? Does it feel good in my hand? Is it too big? Is it too heavy? Remember, whatever you buy, you've got to carry it. And does it give me the experience that I want? Does it give me all of the pieces that, uh, that pay off? Canon has done that. And, I, and I'm very happy. Now, there are a lot of niceties that are coming into cameras right now. My Canon does not have a tilt sensor. When it's up high on a tripod and I get it way up above my head, I would like to be able to tilt that sensor down so I can see what's going on. It, my current body does not have that. My Fuji does have that. And my newest Fuji has the type of LCD on the back that not only tilts, but it swings around. And that's what I am filming with today, so I can see myself in the picture. That way I can put it anywhere I need and still be sure that I am photographing. So there are a lot of things that you would like. Not a necessity, but really a nicety. Another nicety that I like is a camera that has dual recording media. My Fuji takes two little SD cards. My Canon takes an SD and a larger card. The newer Canons take multiple size or multiple SD cards. All of these things are good. You don't know why yet, but eh, trust me, you'll want one that has at least two card slots in there. And I don't know of anybody that is putting any more than two, but two card slots are really good. Now I want to get to a part about cameras that this will really, really take some, uh, some some feel for you. You'll have to get one, go to your camera store, look at it, handle it, make sure it's working for you, but find a menu that works for you easily. I have used almost every kind and in my teaching students come to me and they say, hey I don't know what you're talking about. My menu doesn't have this. Sorry, not everything is totally fixed in stone and is absolutely necessary, but there are a lot of things in there you're going to find out you would really like to know. And being able to find them easily is a good thing. Now, I have used Sony cameras. Didn't like their menu settings too awful well. I have used Nikon. And they're pretty darn good. But Canon is the absolute best. My Fujis give me consternation every once in a while. They're, the newest ones are much better than the older ones. But I like Canon. Doesn't matter what type of body or uh, style of camera I pick up, the menu's the same. It doesn't have all of the same bells and whistles. But you'll find it in the same place, under the same title, and it makes life so easy for you to use as a photographer. Now, what have we learned today about picking a camera? We've learned that, first of all, there are some features that are really important. There are some niceties, but 
having a top plate that shows shutter speed, f-stop, and aperture, and having an LCD that echoes the same information is very important. This is not a nicety. This is, this is very important. And in the nighttime and when it's on a tripod and everything else is failing, you're sure going to be glad that you can see the picture plus your info on the LCD. You will be happy. I think you need to go to your local camera store and do a test feel. I think it's important to be able to pick it up and see how it fits your hand. There are a lot of smaller lighter cameras that would be spectacular to carry when you're out in the field. But when I get it in my hand, if my big fat fingers can't hit the right button, it's useless. So it has to be the right size for you. And the last one is check it out twice. I mean, do your research. Look them up online. Does it have this? Does it have that? You can always go on and say compare camera A to camera B, uh, Appleette and some other uh, photo uh, applications will give you a comparison. Look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. This is better, this is not so bad. And you have to find out. Do your homework. Number two, get there and touch it, feel it, see it. If you go to your camera store and they're all locked up and they're on big chains and they won't let you touch them, uh, maybe you ought to find another camera store. If you can't get a salesman to help you, and let you touch it and feel it and hold it and walk outside and look through it and make a couple of test shots. Buy your own card, stick in there, shoot it, see what kind of quality it is when you get home. If they won't let you do that, find another camera store. I love my local camera stores. I got a couple here uh, in my hometown that are superb and the people are terrific and they will do this. And it's nice that they help. There are other stores I know for a fact that I don't shop there because they don't help. Well, my friends, I hope that we have covered a few things that will be sufficient for you to make some choices. I would really hope that if you've got a camera already, that you would use it to the best of your ability and when upgrade time comes, and it will come, in the world of electronics, five to seven years is about time to upgrade again. I don't change every single camera upgrade there is, but about every two, I do. And all of the newest ones are a little smaller, lighter, uh, like the Fuji and uh, the new Canon R5 the new uh, Nikon Z7 II, uh, all of the new uh, mirrorless cameras are much, much lighter. They are a ball to carry. They're easy to shoot and they're really compact. My older Canons are, are reaching the end of their tribal life and the fact that they're so heavy, mm -hmm, it makes you want to change. So Pick a camera that you can live with for the next five to seven years and don't be scrambling for everything that comes up. <gasps> oh, it's got one more megapixel. Eh, it doesn't matter. What it needs is at least 50% more megapixels. It needs a lot of new things. And right now, uh, the two best I've seen, uh, two of my friends are working with Nikon Zs and uh, a couple of my other friends are working with uh, Canon DSLRs. And at some point in my life, I'll be looking for a Canon mirrorless, as soon as I can afford it. But I'll tell you, I love my little mirrorless Fujis because I can carry the same lens set. Something goes 10 to 24, 16 to 80, and uh, 50 to 250 and three little lightweight lenses 
that gets me there. My Canon, I can carry a 16 by 35, a uh, 24 105, and a 100 400. And in those three lenses, I've got everything I need. The Canon, probably twice as much weight. Whatever you buy, you have to carry. And then think of this. We'll talk about this in the future. Tripods. Eh, can't do without it. So, my friends, until we meet again and discuss something new, subscribe. Check off that you like this video. Send us some questions. Something we can help you with particularly. I am glad and happy to do so. Once you're a subscriber, you're a friend for life. And I mean that. Thank you for tuning in. I love to be with you. And we'll look forward to seeing you soon. Signing out for right now. Good night. Thank you for listening to our vlog on which camera to buy. Let me just give you a quick summary of everything that Rogers talked about. Primarily, we want you to ask yourself, what do you want to do with your photography? <clears throat> if the answer is that you want to keep everything on the internet, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, those kinds of things, then it's possible, for the most part, to accomplish what you want with a phone camera. But even if your camera has controls for shutter speed, ISO, and f-stop, you're still going to be limited by a tiny sensor, a very small data file, and miniature lenses. You may eventually find that a phone camera is lacking in the capabilities that you desire. Disciplines like astrophotography will be very difficult. Now, just the other night, my son-in-law and I were out shooting astrophotography, I with my full-frame, fully functioning camera, and he with his iPhone. And he took some amazing pictures. But remember, they're still small data files, and you can't make very big prints with them if that's something that you ever want to think of doing. It was really cool, and he did some neat stuff, but he couldn't blow them up very big if he wanted to. An example is when I taught at our local university. The first day of class, I asked the students what camera they expected to use for the class. Now, in the class requirements, it had said a fully functioning camera. But most of the class was planning on using their phone to do the class. By the end of the class, most of the students that used their phone were unable to complete the projects and assignments that I had given. The ones with fully functioning cameras, they're the ones that enjoyed the class most because their camera could do everything that the class required. Now, really that's what we're trying to do with this vlog. We want you to have the opportunity to get the most possible out of your photography. We want you to take quality nightscape photographs, excellent landscapes, exceptional portraits and professional looking sports and nature photography. We don't want you to regret the camera you purchased. After phone cameras, Roger talked about point and shoot cameras. Their sensors are really not much larger than a phone's. With only one lens and limited control over settings, they still lack what we believe is necessary for serious photography. He next reviewed bridge cameras. They have one fixed lens. Most bridge cameras still have small sensors, but because they have better lenses, they have better zooming cap capability. The small sensor still limits their usefulness in serious photography outside the internet. Next was entry-level DSLR cameras. Roger has taught hundreds of students over the years. Many times, his students have come to him wishing they would saved longer and bought a serious DSLR rather than an entry-level one. The main complaint was that students outgrew their cameras as their skill level improved. They wanted more and were unable to get it out of an entry-level DSLR camera. Roger and I together have taught workshops for over 35 years. Participants with entry-level DSLR cameras almost universally wish they had more. 
After all that, if you've decided to buy a full function camera like the ones Roger has mentioned, here are a few features we think are most important. One, buy a quality camera you are willing to carry. Remember, you'll probably have a few lenses and other gear and you're going to have to carry all that. The trend today is in mirrorless cameras. They're much lighter. My next one will be mirrorless. Whether you buy a full frame or a crop sensor, it will come down to personal choice and final product from the camera. Two, get one that has separate controls for shutter speed, f-stop, and ISO on the top or back of the camera so that you can make those adjustments without having to look at the LCD. Three, does it have an LCD or knobs on the top and an LCD on the back so that all of your settings are readily reviewable? Four, does it have menus that are easily understood and navigated? Five, a real plus is a variable angle LCD screen on the back so that you can see what you're filming from any uh, angle. Six, does it have dual card slots for memory cards? Lastly, do your research. Go to the camera store and get a hold of it. See how it feels in your hand. Insert a memory card. Take a few pictures. Go home and process them. See if they meet your needs. If you have any questions, please comment below. Understand, please, that our only intention is to help you to be the best photographer you can possibly be and that you get the camera that's going to best fit what you want to do with your photography. Thank you very much, and we'll see you on our next vlog.